In this video, I'm gonna show you guys my process of elimination on how I figure out what's wrong with my car. This is gonna be a lengthy video. We're not gonna do anything super cool with music and cut scenes and stuff like that. But if you will, if you're curious, especially for the newbies, stick around, watch the whole video. I think you're gonna learn something. As much as I love my Fox body, sometimes I just wanna set fire to it. It makes me so mad. I get aggravated with it. It's like, you know, I fix one thing on it and it's something else, always. You guys probably don't know it, but this car has developed a skip. Ever since we blew a head gasket, uh, I put the new head gasket on it, everything seemed to be good, and it's got a skip in it now, like a misfire. I know a lot of you guys don't understand what a skip is, but a skip is basically just, like I said, a misfire. Well, tonight we're going to go through some of my thought processes as far as how I would evaluate what's wrong with this car. And I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride and maybe it'll help you if you're struggling with your car. So don't set fire to your Fox body yet. Let's talk it through. Let's find out what's wrong with it. So for me in my case, let's go back over what it was that was going on with this car. So let's backtrack a little bit. So this car blew a head gasket, uh, what, a little over a month ago, probably five weeks ago, something like that, I can't remember. Brought the car back, pulled the head off, found out what it was. We did have antifreeze all the way up in the crossover tube up into the turbo, I'm pretty sure. I mean, this stuff was way up there. So, looked at the pistons, looked at everything. I didn't see any issues. So, I put the car back together with a new head gasket, and it ran pretty good for a little while, like, I mean, like for maybe a minute or so. And then later on, it just kind of started to misfire. Well, what could it be? We knew we blew a head gasket, so we could have damaged something, right? But let's go through the hard parts list here. The pistons checked out, from what I could tell. They seemed fine. The rings looked fine. The cylinder walls looked fine. I think the bottom end of the car was not hurt. So if the bottom end was good, now we gotta start looking at something else. So when we pulled the head off this car, we found part of the head gasket wedged in between the valve and the valve seat. So it's probably not a good thing, but I figured, hey, it'll be fine, no issue. I looked at the valve seat as best I could. I pushed the valve down. I didn't see any damage, so it should be fine. But it could have warped a valve, been a valve, messed up a seat. You know, there could be an issue still there. So let's think about this for a second, guys. Now, it could be a number of things. We could have a sensor or something like that that went out on the car, sure. We could have a bad injector. Uh, we could have a dirty injector. There's a few things that could be going on. But internally, I do think that the car is fine. There's no problems. It doesn't sound like it's knocking or anything like that. So let's dive a little bit deeper into these heads. Now I threw this thing back together pretty quick like. I'm thinking that it might be the valves. I think we might have a rocker arm or two that's a little too tight. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna pull this upper intake off, pull this valve cover off, and check and make sure that I didn't over tighten any valves. I've got a pretty good feeling that that's what's wrong with it but I'm not sure. So we may pull this thing apart and that may not be what the issue is. This is what I want you guys to remember. I want you to think critically. Really sit back and think about what could be the issue with your car. Don't just start throwing money at it. This is not gonna cost us a dime and we will have this valve cover off this car in like 20 minutes. A lot of times it's not a major fix with these cars like we make it out to be. A lot of times it's just something silly, something that we looked over, didn't think about it, and now we've got an issue. So instead of freaking out and sending the car to a shop or buying a bunch of parts up, let's think about this, let's pull it down and check it out. If you guys really need to know how to take your upper end take off and get to your valve cover, then I'll do a video on that, but I think most of you know how to do that. So we'll go ahead, blow through this, and we'll pick back up once we get there. I know you guys have heard over the years that there's a sequence that you have to check these things. Absolutely not true. You can do it that way, but you can also just check them individually and it's actually really, really easy to do. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take your coil wire off, stick it over here to the side. Next off, make sure your car is in neutral. Please, for the love of God, do not try this with your car in gear because it will take off on you. Secondly, if you guys can see this, just take this top wire off that goes to the top of your solenoid and uh, now you can basically spin the engine over with a screwdriver. No, it's not gonna shock you. It's not gonna do anything like that. But for right now, let's go in. Let's check, make sure none of these are too tight. Guys, so far, I don't feel anything that's too tight. So uh, this isn't looking too promising, to be completely honest with you. 
Also, I'll tell you what, for the sake of this video, because my air conditioner is not charged up, it's loose, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So uh, the very first thing that you wanna do is you wanna spin the engine over, start over here uh, on the end, either end, and you wanna spin the engine over. And what you'll see are these rocker arms start to move. And what you wanna do is make sure that it's on the base circle. What does that mean to you? Well, just make sure that it's got some play in it like that. We're gonna start right here on this one. Okay, I can tell you right now that this particular rocker arm is on base circle, meaning it's not on a lobe on the camshaft. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and loosen this thing up and set our preload. Okay guys, I'm not gonna take you along for the whole process of this. I'm just gonna show you how to do uh, a couple and then uh, we'll pick back up after the fact. So what you wanna do is loosen up your poly lock, which is gonna be this top nut right here. It's usually a 5 8 it depends. Some are different. And then you want to loosen the center, if I can get the right size. And then what you want to do is come in with an Allen wrench and loosen up this center lock nut, okay? So there's a little lock nut on the inside of these. And now, all you want to do is hand tight. Just take your hand, twist the top poly lock, the top nut here. I say top nut, the big nut, the outer nut right here. Twist it until it stops. And then literally from there, all you're gonna do is, you can do a quarter turn or a half turn. I think a lot of you guys like to use a half turn. A lot of times I'll go quarter turn just to make sure. But you just come in like this, and there's your quarter turn, all right? Lock it down. And then I always come back and give it a little bump, just like that. And what that does is bind up that inner lock nut so that way it doesn't move on you. All right, so let's move on to the next one, and then that's gonna be it, guys. So hopefully you can see this. So we know now that that's on the base circle. It's not moving anymore, so it's on base circle. Yeah, guys, I think these are all fine. So I don't think this is our problem, but you know what? It's worth sharing, right? It's the thought process. That's what's important here. Like I said, loosen that up, come back, hand tight until it stops, okay, stops. We're gonna go a quarter of a turn or half. It's up to you guys, whatever you like. I prefer about a quarter. And then lock down that center. All right. Give it a good tug. And then come in, move this ever so slightly, and that will lock everything down for you. All right, so I'm gonna work my way around with this and I'll get back to you guys after we're done and we will see if that fixed the problem. Fairly sure that wasn't the problem. Nothing felt tight. It felt basically like it was supposed to. So that's okay, that's okay. It's part of the process. So we're gonna go through this and I'm gonna show you guys. I mean, this is real life stuff. I thought I knew the problem. Chances are, it's probably not gonna be it, but this does give us a good opportunity to go in, make sure all the injectors were plugged in correctly because that is a big issue on these cars. That number eight injector likes to come unplugged. So check all that, make sure everything's good. Check your gasket, just check everything underneath the intake that you normally couldn't because there's a lot of things that could cause a skip or a misfire. So while you've got everything off, just go in, make sure all your injectors are plugged in like they're supposed to be. Uh, we got a lot of clips broken, but yeah, I think everything looks pretty good. So looks good on this side. Then we're just gonna come in over on this side, check everything, same thing. Everything looks good so far. Give your injectors a good little twist, uh, just to make sure they're not froze up or stuck or anything like that. All right, so before we start the car up, um, I wanna say I'm pretty sure that this is not gonna fix the problem. It could, but chances are it's probably not, but that's okay. The whole point of this video is to teach you guys how to think critically, right? That's something that really needs to be checked. It was a doubt in my mind, so it's something that we need to check either way. So with that being said, uh, whatever the outcome is, if, if the car doesn't run right, then what we're gonna do is dig a little bit deeper, right? We're gonna try to save as much money as possible and as much time as possible. This total project here probably only took 30 minutes to do from start to finish. It's not a big deal. It's not hard to do and it's definitely worth checking. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start the car up. Uh, I will tell you guys, you're gonna hear like some clattering and stuff like that. 
that is that cutout that rattles underneath the car. So it sounds like absolute trash, but should be able to tell if the car's skipping or not either way. What you saw me using right here was just a little infrared thermometer. Basically what I was doing is going around and testing each individual header tube. And what I found was number seven cylinder basically is just not firing or not getting any fuel. One of the two. So uh, they make testers that you can just plug in to make sure if your car is firing or not. But we're going to do it the old school way. And I'm going to show you guys if we're getting fired from up here on the cap. And then we can... Go from there and say, all right, it might be a plug. If it's not a plug, then more than likely it's going to be that cylinder or either a bad injector. All right, let me go ahead and test that. All right, so what we did here is just literally stick a screwdriver in the end of this plug wire, and we're going to start the car up and see if we see any arcs and sparks. If it's firing, then it should. See that? good okay all right guys so let's think about this if that thing is firing that means either the spark plug is not firing or more than likely there's something wrong with that injector i'm starting to lean a little more toward the injector being the issue considering these are brand new spark plugs that we have there's a good chance that it is just an injector or either there's a valve that's really, really jacked up. This is what I want you guys to think about before we move any further. For a car to be skipping this bad on one cylinder, the valve's pretty much just got to be completely jacked. I don't think that's the problem. I'm thinking it's going to be the number seven injector uh, is either clogged or just not firing. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this plug out and we'll check the plug the same way we checked it up here. We'll see what we got. All right, guys. So we've got something on the spark plug here and it is soaked. So, uh, that looks like gas. So that tells me that the spark plug may not be firing. And I will tell you this, and it has been mentioned in the videos before, this car has anti-seize on the threads. See all this dark stuff right here? Look at that. That very well may have kept the spark plug from grounding out on the blocks. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and clean some of this stuff off and see if we can get the spark plug to fire. Okay, so I cleaned the spark plug off and uh, let's go ahead and plug this thing back into the boot and see if we can get this thing to fire. Now, this is gonna be really loud because we don't have a plug back here, so just don't mind that. And remember, if you're gonna be doing this, you need to ground out the spark plug. I'm gonna go ahead and start the car up and then I'm gonna switch the camera off and review the footage because this is gonna be extremely loud, so I don't wanna let it run. And I'll get back to you guys in just a second. All right, well, I just reviewed the footage and it looks like the spark plug is firing, so that's good. Well, you guys already know that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back in and hope for the best. I'm hoping that that's all it was, was that anti-seize was keeping this plug from firing. So let's go ahead, stick it back in the car and see what happens. All right, so there's one other harsh reality here. And that could be that that wasn't gas on the spark plug. It very well could be oil. If it's oil, then obviously we've got a ring problem and uh, there's really nothing we can do. We're gonna find out real quick, like it smelled like gas, but there's a chance that it may be oil. I didn't think about that until just now. So 
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start this thing up and we're pretty much gonna know right off the bat what's going on. All right, guys, let's go for it. As of right now, car's running great. It's not misfiring, nothing. So let me back up real quick and explain to you guys why it is that I took the intake off instead of testing the tubes earlier. So they had already been tested and I kind of get false readings. That, that thing's not super accurate. If you're gonna do any of this type of testing with a thermometer like that, you need to do it early on, like right when you start the car up, when it's cold, go ahead and start testing. That's gonna be the easiest way to read. So I was getting false readings on everything before and uh, I just, I couldn't tell. So I assumed that it was gonna be something with the valve train. Look, not a problem. It only took like 30 minutes to check that. That wasn't the issue. And from there, we just got lucky with an accurate reading on the thermometer. So honestly, guys, <laughs> it worked out in the end, I guess. As of right now, anyway, I'll let you guys know if, if we have any other issues with it once I drive it. So originally, like the main idea behind this video was to help you guys, you know, get your Fox body back up and running, show you how to think critically. So you gotta know how to think about these engines whenever you're starting to work on one. You just don't wanna jump out here and start throwing parts at it. Look at that. This cost us no money to get this car fixed. So um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna title this video yet. I want it to, to reach as many people as possible. So I'm gonna do some soul searching on this and I don't know, we'll figure it out. But guys, I hope this helps you out. This worked out honestly, perfectly. And I want you guys to know that I make these videos to help you all out. That's what this channel is about. I want you to work on your own car or at least know what you're getting into before you take it somewhere. All right, guys, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. And as always, thanks for watching.